Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I will talk about developing a 3D mesh generation engine for a structured domain. Basically, we will focus on writing simple functions in MATLAB to generate nodal coordinates and connectivity matrices for finite element discretization of a structural domain with eight node hexahedron elements. The implementation source files for this video can be found in my GitHub repository, EasyFem, and here is the address. From the 2D mesh implementation, we obtain the connectivity and nodal coordinate matrices. I just want to remind you that the connectivity matrix's size is equal to the number of total elements in the domain, times 4, because each element is connected to 4 nodes. Similarly, the size of the nodal coordinate matrix is equal to the number of total nodes times 2. Alright, let's jump into the implementation details. Let's assume we have a 3D structured domain like this block. As a rule of implementation, we can identify this structured domain with six control points x min, x max, y min, y max, z min, and z max. Next, let's assume we want four elements in the x direction, three in the y direction, and five in the z direction. As an implementation rule, I would like to do the numbering of the points from x min to x max, then from y min to y max, and from bottom to top. It will be like this, for simplicity, I am skipping the numbering of all nodes. So, for example, the node numbers will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the first row, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 in the second row, and if we continue, the last node will be 120. For element numbering, we can follow the same rule and number elements from x min to x max, y min to y max, and z min to z max. Again, to generate the connectivity matrix, we need to know each element talks to which nodes. Therefore, as a rule, and similar to 2D mesh, I will use the counterclockwise rule. For example, for element number 1, the connectivity will be 1, 2, 7, 6, 21, 22, 27, 26. For element number 2, it would be 2, 3, 8, 7, 22, 23, 28, 27, and so on. That's all we need for the implementation. Okay, let's jump into the code. We will have three main functions for the implementation and visualization purposes. The main.m function will be the entry point of our code. Next, as I explained schematically, we will implement two functions to generate nodal coordinates and connectivity matrices. Finally, for visualization of mesh, we will use the plotmesh3d.m function. Okay, here is the content of the main.m function, some MATLAB cleaning stuff. Then, we will use the meshperms variable as a MATLAB structure array to store control points and the number of elements in each direction. For example, for a 1x1x2 domain, we want 4 elements in the x direction, 3 in the y direction, and 5 in the z direction. Next, we call nodal coordinates and the connectivity matrix generator functions. Finally, we can pass the nodal coordinates and the connectivity matrix into the plotmesh2d function to visualize the mesh. Here is additional information about the input and output arguments in the generate coordinates function. Remember, unlike the 2D mesh, the nodal coordinate matrix's size will be equal to the total number of nodes times 3 because of the 3D spatial dimension. Inside this function, step 1 is to get the geometry information, such as the control points and the number of elements in each direction. Then, we initialize the number of nodes in each direction, which will be the number of elements plus 1. We use MATLAB linspace function in step 2 to generate equally distanced points. In step 3, we generated a 3D grid using MATLAB mesh grid function. And finally, in step 4, we reshape the mesh grid outputs and return the nodal coordinates. 
This is slightly different than what we did in the 2D mesh. Because of the third dimension in the 3D mesh and the way we extract the coordinates from the 3D array. Similarly, here is additional information about the input and output arguments in the connectivity matrix function. Because we are using 8 nodes elements, the connectivity matrix size will equal the total number of elements times 8. Inside this function, step 1 is to get the geometry information, such as the number of elements and nodes in each direction. Step 2 is to generate the nodal local counterclockwise pattern. For example, the nodal pattern for the first element will be 1, 2, 7, 6, 21, 22, 27, 26. As we move forward, the nodal pattern will change because of the increment in the Z direction. And finally, step 3 is to loop over the number of elements in the X, Y, and Z directions, and get the connectivity for each element, store it in the connectivity matrix and update the increments, as you can see in the code. For the 3D plot function, we will initialize some plotting properties and set up the local nodal ordering pattern, the counterclockwise pattern we discussed, because we need this pattern to generate faces using the MATLAB fill function. And finally, we make a loop over the number of elements and number of faces from the ordering matrix to extract the nodal coordinates for each face based on the given local nodal pattern, and use the MATLAB fill function to plot the mesh for the current element. Okay. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching my videos and supporting the channel. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel for upcoming videos and give thumbs up for videos. Thanks and see you in my next video.